Hey bees, I'm Marie from Humble Bee and Me. Today we are literally whipping up a batch of surprisingly lightweight whipped kupuatsu passion fruit body butter. This all natural whipped body butter melts instantly when massaged into the skin. A little goes a long way and leaves the skin feeling richly moisturized and soft and gorgeous. We're making a 30 gram or roughly one ounce batch of this body butter today. And that batch size is important because it is matched to the whipping method. Different batch sizes of whipped body butters require slightly different whipping methods. Basically we can kind of get away with doing a bit less with a smaller batch size than we can with a larger batch size. So if you are going to scale this formulation up, you are going to need to change how you whip it. If you'd like to learn how to do that and more about the funny business that can happen when whipping body butters, please make sure you check out my Autumn Spice Whipped Body Butter, both the formulation and the video that I shared back in October of 2020. Let's take a moment to talk about whipped body butter formulations. In order to get and stay soft and scoopable, whipped body butter formulations need to contain a pretty sturdy amount of a soft butter or a blend of butters. We need there to be a bunch of stuff that wants to be soft at room temperature in the formulation rather than brittle, like say cocoa butter, so that the formulation stays soft at room temperature. <laughs> if you live somewhere warmer than I do, you may need to shift the butter oil balance to include more butter and less oil so that your body butter whips up nicely and doesn't liquefy on you throughout its life. I made an entire video about melting body butters last summer. I highly recommend giving it a watch. Alternatively, if you live somewhere colder than I do, or perhaps you're very enthusiastic with your air conditioning, you may need to shift that fat balance in the other direction to include more liquid oils and less soft butters. This formulation features just one soft butter and it is one of my all time favorites, kupuatsu butter. Kupuatsu butter is one of the first butters I tried after shea and cocoa butter and I immediately fell in love with its rich, creamy, smooth texture and very unique silicone-like finish on the skin. You'll need eight grams of kupuatsu butter for this formulation. That kupuatsu butter is our soft buttery base, so now we need to soften it further with just the right amount of liquid oils to create something that will whip up and stay soft and whippy. As far as soft butters go, kupuatsu butter is fairly stiff, so we are using 40% kupuatsu butter, 60% liquids. This ratio can really shift a lot depending on the butters that you are using. I have done 65-35 and 75-25 blends as well and kind of everything in between depending on the butters I am working with and the other ingredients in the formulation. So yeah, it's not a super universal rule of 40-60. It really depends on the butter and everything else. This formulation includes three different liquid emollients to soften the kupuatsu butter. Our star liquid is five grams of ultra light luxurious passion fruit oil. Both the kupuatsu butter and the passion fruit oil in this formulation were gifts from Levita Oils, a small company based in Pennsylvania that specializes in high quality oils and butters sourced from small sustainable producers in Brazil. You'll also need three grams of cocoa caprolate, a lightweight plant derived ester. If you don't have it, you could use Use a different liquid plant derived ester like isoamylorate or you could just use more passion fruit oil. And our last liquid emollient is 3.9 grams of fractionated coconut oil chosen primarily because it's lightweight and it's cheaper than passion fruit oil so it helps keep the cost of this formulation down. If you're feeling extra decadent you could definitely replace the fractionated coconut oil with more passion fruit oil. These four ingredients make up our heated phase. I did try cold processing this formulation as part of my development process and it just wasn't as smooth and lovely as I wanted it to be at all. So I did decide to melt the butters and oils together before whipping them. Use a water bath to gently melt the heated phase ingredients in a bowl that you can later do your whipping in. I picked up three of these little Kirkland brand stainless steel bowls secondhand. I have no idea when Costco sold them as I've never seen them in a Costco, but they are perfect for small batches of whipped butters. Once the kupuatsu butter has melted, give the bowl a swirl to get everything to mix together a bit and then pop it in your freezer for about 10 minutes. What we're looking for is for the edges of the body butter to be solid, but the center to still be a bit soft. After about 10 minutes of freezing, grab your electric beaters. You want the attachments that you would use to cream butter with if you were baking cookies, as they're designed to whip air into things and are sturdy enough to do the job. If your whisk attachment is quite sturdy, that could work too. Mine is just rather bendy. Whip the butter until it is white, 
fluffy and glossy. This should take about three minutes. Take care not to over whip it or the butter will warm up too much, remelt a little bit and then collapse on you. At this point in time, check to see if the body butter and the bowl are room temperature, if they're still kind of cold. This will really depend on the bowl you're using and how well it retains its temperature. If it's still a bit chilly, leave it out to come to room temperature fully and then quickly re-whip the butter. I find one final room temperature whipping helps ensure that the butter stays soft at room temperature. This waiting period is also helpful if you live somewhere warmer or cooler than I do. And for reference, my studio is about 20 degrees Celsius or 68 degrees Fahrenheit. If the butter gets hard and brittle when given a chance to settle at room temperature, you'll want to whip in a bit more liquid oil. Just make sure you're weighing those additions and writing them down later so you can make adjustments to the formulation the next time you make it. If the body butter softens too much when left to settle at room temperature, you'll want to remelt it to incorporate some more soft butter and then re-whip it. When you're happy with the consistency of your butter when it's rested and been re-whipped at room temperature, weigh in 0.1 grams of vitamin E to help extend the shelf life of the formulation and quickly whip that in for another 15 to 20 seconds. I made my body butter all in one go as I worked out the whipping and the ratios as part of the development process. If you want to add a fragrance oil or an essential oil to this formulation, add it with the vitamin E. Simply adjust the amount of fractionated coconut oil to make room for it. I'd start with 0.1% of a fragrance oil or 0.5% of an essential oil. And of course, make sure whatever specific nice smelling thing you are using is approved for use in leave-on body products at the rate that you want to use it at. Gently scoop or pipe the whipped body butter into a one ounce or 30 milliliter jar and you're done. This body butter should easily last a year or two if kept relatively cool and dry throughout its lifetime. Make sure to store this body butter somewhere with a temperature that's quite close to the temperature of where you made it because if it gets too hot, it'll melt and then it, it won't be whipped anymore. If you'd like to learn more about why your body butters are melting and how to fix it, click here. And if you'd like to learn more about why your body butter is greasy and how to fix that, click here. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye.